Formula One is back, and that means Greg Allen F1's channel is back. I'm Greg Allen, host of GAF1, and today we're talking about the Imola Grand Prix just wrapped up in Italy, and a really interesting and wet, wild affair we had in this one. So let's get right into it. Rain all over the racetrack to start, which means everyone's going to be on the intermediate tires, except for Alfa Tauri and Pierre Gasly, who go for the full wet tires. We'll talk about that for a second. Lap one, Verstappen takes the lead on a fantastic move and a, a great drag race right off the, the beginning of this race. Hamilton takes damage on his front wing. Thought that might be an issue for him. Winds up not being so much. And lap two, we get a safety car. Nicholas Latifi ha has an issue and crashes out of the, the race. Um, Nikita Mazepin had a, a role in it, but it was not his fault at all in this case. Latifi uh, makes a mistake, costs him and Williams the first of two cars they would lose in this race. Lap four. Uh, Schumacher also crashes, needs a new ring, and he, he had an interesting situation where his crash closed pit lane, so he had to go around the track a few times without a front wing. Definitely a concern for him and that team. He does get a new wing, though, and has a very uneventful race the rest of the way. So, in lap eight, Lando Norris, Saints, Gasly have a fantastic battle going on. I thought that was noteworthy. Really, really great stuff. They were trading spots back and forth throughout of it. I kind of wish the broadcast would do a little bit better job showing some of those midfield to, to, towards the end battles. They, they really just were focusing on the front for uh, the first 10-15 laps of this Grand Prix. At lap 11, I noticed that Valtteri Bottas was only 10th, so that wouldn't be the worst situation for him all day, but it was notable that he couldn't really get anywhere in that Mercedes, and uh, this is not the way you want to start this season that could be your last if you're Valtteri Bottas with Mercedes. Definitely um, a very underwhelming day, and, and then uh, it would get worse for him. So, lap 12, Checo gets a 10-second penalty for overtaking under his safety car. So, Checo spins out under the rain here and decides to just go back and take his spot, which is a, a big no-no, and I'm really surprised at how long Checo has been in Formula 1 that he made this mistake. This entire day was just a, a massive amount of mistakes by Checo, and it costs so many chance of the points. So really unfortunate to see. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about him further down the board, but that to me was just glaring of how do you make that mistake? And also how does Red Bull not tell him to at least give those spots back to maybe mitigate that penalty? Uh, Gasly also struggling at this point with the full wets. It wound up not being the right choice and Gasly has to have a, a bit of a recovery ride the rest of this race. They ultimately give in, come in for intermediates and, and then would have to go and make another change to slicks later on. So. Not the right move for Alpha Tori. Alpha Tori is way faster than they've looked so far in this season. Uh, lap 14, Carlos Sainz cannot stay in the track at this point. Notable because he has a fantastic end of the race, but he really struggled in the first half of this and, and really was having a bad weekend that he did a, a, an also a fantastic job recovering and salvaging a, a pretty nice uh, finish to this Grand Prix and weekend. But at this point, I was just thinking, what else can go wrong for Carlos? Uh, lap 22, Vettel goes on to the medium tires and slicks. He also gets a 10 second penalty, so Sebastian Vettel's horrendous start to the season continues on, and he was just about five or, five or six laps, maybe, maybe not even five or six, maybe about three or four laps too early on those medium tires. Lap 27 now, Verstappen comes in and he boxes for slicks. Lewis Hamilton decides to stay out. Uh, Sean Clark's boxes, Hamilton boxes all one lap later. They all go on to the slicks. Hamilton has a bad pit stop though. Mercedes doesn't do a good job again and Red Bull's able to keep the lead. And that would be pretty much the entire race for the win at that point, because Hamilton is never really able to get back. Has a really fantastic end of the race, but can't get back to Verstappen. So a huge crash also winds up uh, happening. Well, two huge crashes at the same time, if you want to consider it. Implications for the race, Lewis Hamilton just drives off the track and, and collects front wing damage to his car and gets stuck. Winds up going a lap down, does get his car out of the pit there, but it costs him, except a, a great uh, stroke of fortune for him happens, and not a good stroke of fortune for the rest of Mercedes, in that Valtteri Bottas and George Russell have a massive, spectacular crash. So Russell got a huge run on Valtteri Bottas. Bottas, I guess, didn't see him. I don't think he did it on purpose, but he does pinch Russell. Russell catches the grass, crashes into Valtteri, and the two of them have a spectacular crash. And this all happens moments after Hamilton had his incident on the track. And that actually winds up red flagging the race and allowing Lewis Hamilton to get back on the lead lap, which is a massive game changer for the way this thing would end. Uh, so we have a period of red flag. Uh, also notice Valtteri Bottas and George Russell really were angry at each other. Bottas looked like he might have, might have been winded and a little hurt in that crash, but um, 
They had a little bit of a disagreement right after that crash, and, and George Russell smacked him. So we'll see what happens and what comes of that. But uh, interesting how their relationship might play out the rest of the year, seeing that one could be re replacing the other at Mercedes uh, next year. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, we go to a rolling start rather than a standing start, which for me was a big disappointment, uh, especially for me with seeing where Lando was. I kind of want to see what he could do on a restart there. We don't get that. And uh, Verstappen gets it perfect on the rolling start. He was always going to get it perfect on that. Um, Sonoda does not, though. And Alpatori struggles this year, continue, and, and he spins out. And he's going to pretty much have a bad rest of the race because of this. And it costs him and, and Alpatori. Again, those cars and their drivers are really capable. They just, they've had some bad luck and, and made some, some bad decisions so far in the first two Grand Prix. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing them maybe have a little bit more um, steady and stable race on strategy in coming races because I think they're, they're faster than we, we think they are. Uh, Lando Norris gets the second, so that was really exciting for me and McLaren fans everywhere. Lap 38, Checo spins, and this just is going to start the conversation. We're only two Grand Prix in, but he has to have an amazing recovery run in the first race of the year, and now he spins out, so we have the question of does Red Bull have a second seat issue again? It's too early to really be saying that, let's be honest, but it might come up. Checo does not have a good race today at all and doesn't finish in the points. Lap 42, Hamilton starts flying through the field, and that would be the story of the rest of this race. Lap 55, Hamilton gets by the Ferraris and puts himself back in a podium spot. We also get an announcement that Sonoda is going to get a, a five-second penalty for uh, exceeding track limits. We knew that was coming. Not a good race for him again. And then by lap 60, Hamilton does finally overtake Lando Norris. Norris did a great job defending for a while and as long as he could, but it was always inevitable. And Lewis Hamilton gets a second. He also gets the fastest lap, so he will hold on to the World Championship lead. Much closer, though, as Max Verstappen has a pretty much flawless race. I say pretty much because before the rolling start, before the, before the safety car left, he almost spun out. It was that close, but he hangs on to it. So really a, a pretty flawless race for Max Verstappen. Lewis Hamilton recovers to finish second, which is just incredible considering the incident that he had. Uh, you know, people want to hate on Lewis Hamilton all the time. I don't know many drivers that could have had that kind of recovery drive. Uh, there's a reason he's a seven-time champion. And my boy Lando Norris finishes third. An awesome day for McLaren. Daniel Ricciardo had an okay day. I think Ricciardo is still trying to get up to speed in McLaren, though. Um, they made a, a decision to swap those two drivers on team orders. A, a massive decision that probably resulted in a McLaren uh, podium today. I think if they don't do that, Ferrari probably is the, the third podium car today. Overall, a really exciting race. It was a really a story of two different races. The, the first half was completely bonkers, and the second half was really just a story of how far Lewis would climb to get back into the podium spots. So, either way, great Grand Prix today. If you like my video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe, and we'll see you in, in another couple weeks here. So, these... <laughs> These Grand Prix are a little bit more spread out than last year, and I'm still getting used to that. That's why I didn't post for about three weeks. So, see you in the next one, and as always, thank you for watching.